Hello everybody and welcome to this Twinner review. Today I'm going to be telling you everything that you need to know about Twinner. Before the video begins, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And also if you check the description, I'll be leaving a discount link so that you can always get your money's worth for Twinner. What is Twinner? Twinner is essentially a website of which you can port any website into a Android or iOS application. As you can see here, this is the main dashboard where once you've hit create application and created your account, you'll be able to create your first project. So I'm just going to go ahead and select one of these. We're going to go ahead and select e-commerce and we, all we need to do is enter the name. We're going to call this uh, example one. The industry we're going to put as e-commerce and the website platform will be WordPress. Here you can enter your home screen URL, your shop screen, your cart screen and your account screen. And for this we're going to be using google.com. So we're going to go ahead and import google.com and hit build. So here we have our first application. So as you can see inside these are the different options that we have to use. Now I'm going to be taking you through each of these options and we're going to be also going through these ones on the side as well. So before we do that, you have a few buttons at the top where you can show a menu showing all of these options here. You can also say, let us build your app. There's a link to join their Discord, some information here. And then you can obviously add different configurations of your website for version one, two, and then different updates and increments. Along with a live chat button at the bottom right that you can use to simply message them and ask for support. On the left, we have our home page. Now, as you can see, this is full of little bits of information and read sort of articles that you can look through to get some questions and new features and things like that. You also have a link to the live chat and a step by step guide on YouTube. And then you obviously have a setup guide that you can download a preview app and also select a different plan. If we go to the branding page, as you can see, this is where we have three different options. We can look at the app info, the icon and the launch screen. So all we would need to do is change this to example one which is already what we've got you also have an ios bundle id which is a unique id that allows you to publish to the app store and then an android package name which is a unique thing that you would use to publish your apk to the play store under app icon you can upload an icon for the app uh, very very simple this is what will appear on the app store when you go to download it and then the launch screen for the app before it actually opens your content under app theme, you can select different colors for the app. So as you can see the tab, you can select different colors for that. The navigation bar, you can select ones for that, along with the title font size, image heights, and image width. So the size of images on your page, along with the font of all of the text. You can also easily hit save as draft, or you can immediately publish it to your production. Under screens, this is where you're able to change each screen of your website app. So as you can see, we have general settings, we have a login, we have home, shop, cart and account. All of these have the same things at the top, as you can see, but we're going to begin with general settings. So the URL policy, you can basically make it open in current tab with the same domain, or you can open it in a different domain and open it in a mobile browser. And you can also add your own custom policies by hitting this button here. So this allows you to remove any elements from your page. All you would need to do is put in the individual identifier for that element, sub element for it to check, and then the inner HTML. And then this will basically remove any elements that you don't want on your website or app. Under CSS, you can basically add your own customized CSS properties to make it look different, feel different, however you want. All you would need is the element identifier and then you enter your CSS into this and it will change. Under scripts, you can add new scripts. You can have a continuous injection time, a document start or document end, along with your script in this text box here, and then a cart refresh. As you can see, this feature will enable the functionality to refresh all of your screens when there is any changes to your cart. So this is obviously an e-commerce website so whenever somebody adds a uh, say a t-shirt to their basket this will basically refresh all of the screens to show that there is something in their cart if you go to login you can enable a login process for your app if you want people to be able to log into a, into their own account before they buy something under home you can edit all of these now we're not going to go through each one of these i'm just going to go through the top taskbar because they're the same for each of them so under general you can change the title of the page the url to the page and then some icons for it under the navigation bar, you can either choose to enable or disable it, but if you choose to enable it, you can change the title and the position along with the navigation bar buttons. Under URL policy, I've already described this earlier, but you also have this option for each of your pages. 
As you can see, we also have a responsible URLs to make it SEO friendly. So all you would need to do is put in an expression for us. So whatever you wanted at the end of your link for us. So for example, it says here slash contact us. And then you just match that as a prefix, a substring, a suffix or an equal. So it's completely up to you there. As always, you can also remove elements again. You also have the option to add a CSS script or your own custom script as well. So if we go to app build, our plan doesn't support this yet. But if you do choose to upgrade, then you can hit this upgrade button here and you can hit subscribe. And these are the plans. You can either have a yearly plan or you can have a monthly plan. Yearlies overall are cheaper, but monthlies are cheaper if you only want it for a short period of time. Going back, we can also add some add-ons. Now this adds extensions and integrations. So if we hit this one here, this allows no internet integration. So there will still be a view of your website if your user or your customer is not actually connected to the internet. They obviously won't be able to buy anything, but you can enable this and you can have different headers come up saying no internet for them to view um, to show that they've accessed the right website, but they just don't have the connection to use it. Then you have all of these different parameters that you can use to actually change how how it looks and you can customize it really however you want but you obviously are limited to the header images that this website offers and then under integrations you can use push notifications as you can see to integrate these into your apps and say somebody's ordered something or they've left something in their basket whatever you want a notification to be you can send these to your customers and that is what they would then receive these four buttons here take you immediately back to the home page as you can see you can select different organizations as well if you want to and then under settings you can change the logo the name and then you can also change how many people are members this is a very very common feature for websites such as this as you can see you can invite people and also change their permissions and then finally, you have these three options here. You can either delete your application or website. You can either view it or by hitting this button here, you get immediately taken to the home page. So if we go ahead and hit view, this is what it would look like as you can see twin our preview. And this is what it would look like on the Google Play Store. All you would need to do is hit install and how many downloads you've got. You can view all of this. People can contact you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is what you would need. And that is about it for Twinner. So now it begs the question, do I recommend Twinner and is it good? The very simple answer to that question is yes. Now, the thing that I like about it the most is it's very, very easy to create something. You could have already made your own website and to port that over to an application is made incredibly simple. You don't need to have any knowledge of coding. You don't have to need any knowledge of application development or any sort. This will do that all for you. Obviously, there is a paywall for the more premium features if you do decide to use them. But for what you get for the free trial, I really, really, really like it. And the fact that you can change between the different versions, so 1.0.0, and you can obviously update it in increments. I really, really like that. You can keep track of your old updates to your new updates. Bug fix, really, really handy. And that concludes this, uh, this review. I hope you found this useful. I will see you next time. Goodbye.